It's in the air. A beautiful save. Ayres. And it's cleared off the line. It's not going to count. And the ball is scrambled away. Firstly, thank you, Jada, for joining us on the Regional Football Hub to talk all things regional football. Um, firstly, how are you coping in isolation and during these times? Uh, yeah, it's not too bad, to be honest. I'm getting a lot of things done. I've, uh, I've got work and study, so uh, just smashing that all out, and it gives me a little bit of time to do my rehab at, ta- at home as well, so it gives me plenty of time, yeah. Awesome. And obviously rehab, um, massive injury. How is all that going? Oh, yeah, it's coming along pretty well. Um, to be honest, it's pretty slow and steady and um, everything needs to be c- progressed pretty well. And um, yeah, just hopefully can't, can't take two further steps too forward. Um, don't want to rush it. So. Hmm. Yep. Great. Well, I hope that's going well for you. Obviously, you started in the great town of Wagga Wagga. Who was your first club that you played for? And until you left, did you play for that just that one club or did you uh, have a few different clubs that you played in Wagga? Yeah, I first started at uh, West, West Wagga, which is actually folded now. But um, yeah, my friend I went to school with, she kind of invited me in to go play with them um, since I lived around that area as well. And then um, after they had folded, I ended up going to Tolland, I think it was. And I was there until I actually left Wagga and I played with the under 14 girls and mixed boys as well. Uh, with the boys, sorry. <laughs> Great. So when uh, when I was playing once upon a time, um, I used to think I was a wannabe striker and then one day no one was in goals and I thought, you know what, I'll give it a go and that's how I ended up being a goalkeeper. Did you always start as a goalkeeper or did you play on the field and then made a transition at some point in time? Mine's well, actually a similar story a little bit. Like I, I, when I was in Wagga, I, I was playing on the field a little bit. And then, yeah, I thought myself as a striker. I think every goalkeeper does, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so uh, from that, I tried for the Wagga rep team and no one actually tried for goalkeeper. And I was like, to be honest, I did not like running. So I was like, yeah, throw me in there. <laughs> and yeah, kind of just got stuck there. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Well, everyone speaks about uh, not liking running and becoming a goalkeeper and they say it's easy and then they go and, and train. How For those people that sort of speak like that, how, how hard is goalkeeper training sometimes? Uh, to be honest, it throws, you, like, it throws your body around, it, like hitting the ground repeated the times through a session. Like you're not just working your legs, you're working your whole body, the core strength that you have to have through that and getting up and down like you could countless amounts of times through a session. Uh, to be honest, like it is more, it is difficult. Uh, like... I don't think players realise how hard it is until they actually jump in a session and like throw their bodies around. I'm like, yeah, so just hmm, keep moving. Thank you. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So obviously, <laughs> junior career coming through, and then uh, obviously we're lucky enough to be invited and be involved in national youth championships, um, going away to Coffs Harbour <clears throat> in 2014, goalkeeper of the tournament, and then you obviously went away and backed that up in 2015 at NTC. Um, but goalkeeper of the tournament again there. Did that was that something that sort of sunk into you that maybe you could make something of um football and make a career of it? Yeah, it was it was an amazing honour to get those two um awards and it wasn't just the fact that on myself, but it was with the girls, the girls that I was playing with and the coaches that I had to support me through all that and uh, coaches from Wagga like Andrew Mason, uh they were there through all of those um uh memorable moments for me. But yeah, it was kind of a little bit more realistic in the fact that coaches at those tournaments were starting to ask for W League um, opportunities and things like that. And it was awesome to have that um, opportunity in a way. And I just never thought of it until those things started coming along and my family, um, they said like, you've put so much behind it. And so have they, that they, they gave me everything that I kind of wanted to start making it as a career, I think, like playing... Making your career, your passion, your career. I think that's everyone's dream. Yep. For sure. You mentioned earlier that you played in some girls' teams and some boys' teams. Do you think playing the boys' teams at a younger age is something that helped you develop as a player? 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, playing with the boys in Wagga, like it's a bit rough and guts down there. So you definitely get into one another and especially playing with uh, like training with Yatesy and Liam, like it was fantastic to do those kinds of things and being amongst, amongst the boys. Um, yeah, definitely makes you into a, a better player, stronger mentally, physically. Um, it even gave me the, a little bit more experience for them. When I came up to Sydney, I was training with the NYL Wanderers boys and so I didn't, I didn't expect anything different there. Like I kind of just jumped in and um, trained like normal. So it was, yeah, it's, it's a definitely a big part if you can jump into playing with boys at a younger age. Were the West Indy Wanderers youth boys as rough as uh, Kyle and Liam? <laughs> and do you uh, mean their ability? Do you mean how they... <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like the bit, like... Rough and guts, like, I mean, in Wagga, it's like you smash each other, you get in there, you go hard, like, you come to Sydney, it's a little bit more talkative, talkative, so the boys like to give it to you a little bit more, and you just, like, it's the same in Wagga, I guess, as well, but I don't know, it's a bit different when you come to Sydney, they think they're a bit big shots and things like that, already living up in the big smoke, but, uh, yeah, look, I just gave it back twice as hard, so... <laughs> <coughs> Trust me, Yates, he thinks he's a big shot in Wagga. <laughs> <laughs> um, you speak about travel and obviously commitments and things like that. At 14, you didn't exactly make the move, but you travelled a uh, thousand kilometre round trip to, to go up and um, play football. Take us sort of through the, the toll of that and sort of how that affected everything. Yeah, well, I started travelling when I was in year eight. So it was like I just started pretty much getting the proper feel for high school and things like that. And then I had to start traveling a lot. Like I, I did start doing it at probably the end of year seven as well. So um, yeah, traveling to Canberra on a Friday night um, after school, training that night, training in the morning, playing in the afternoon and, and then traveling to Sydney <laughs> and then playing on a Sunday in Sydney. It was, uh, to be honest, it was exhausting after a while. Like it wasn't, for me, I was I was only playing football. I got out of the car and run amok for a while and then get back in it. But my family, they were the ones that drove up and down that road. They're the ones that put the financial commitment into that kind of stuff. And like it, it took a big toll on my family. That's not just me. I have three little siblings as well. And my stepdad works really hard to get me to get have gotten me to where I am financially and all the support he's put behind me. And the same with my mum. Um, it's it's not not easy to be raising three kids on the road like that um so yeah it was it was mentally and physically a big toll uh, taking a big toll on my family and that's why we made the move to Canberra when I was about 14 so I was thankful for that little move <laughs> and was that more would you do because it? obviously the quality of football and things in Wagga and just being able to go train at a higher environment and do you think now in the local areas here with the NPL teams it's something that's going to help develop with the Wanderers and Murray United, Western Mariners, et cetera. Is that something that's going to help develop players? Yeah, definitely. Having like having the Wagga Wanderers where they were playing up here um, in the State League and things like that, and then going into Canberra, um, it, it's definitely a big part of um, the develop of not only a player, but a club and a team and the regional football. Um, so the fact that you get those opportunities, you need to take them with both hands and really, um, I don't like to sort of learn anything you can from it. it it's um, big commitment. So like a commitment to anything outside of football, like it teaches you a lot of values in that aspect as well. So um, I think, yeah, like making the move from Wagga to Canberra um, with my football really helped me develop it in the fact that it does get quicker when you leave a regional area. Um, what you're required and the characteristics of your body and thing and what you're required to do in training changes so much. Well, I was speaking to the super coach, Andrew Mason, and he said you were quite good at softball and AFL when you were a lot younger. <laughs> what made you decide football? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, yeah, softball was, it was a lot of fun and um, I enjoyed that because that was probably my first real commitment to sport was softball. And so I had, that was, that's what I grew up with, playing with my friends from school. And that was probably where my friends, um, a lot of them probably played softball more than soccer but I th I think soccer kind of just gave me a different feeling to be honest like it just clicked with me like I just jumped into it and just loved every aspect of it and 
yeah, um, AFL kind of fell in. Well, I had to stop playing AFL because uh, I think at that point you could only play until you were 13 with the boys. Um, then the girls pretty much had to drop out because they didn't have any teams for the girls. So, yeah, it kind of was chosen for me in that bit, but um, it really gave me the uh, skills to jump into being a goalkeeper. So. <laughs> Seems like it was a good decision. Um, you mentioned Andrew Mason as someone who had some good influence on you when you were in World Cup playing. And you mentioned your parents. Was there anyone else aside from those three that was pretty influential in you being able to transition to, to Canberra easily? Was there players that helped from a mentor perspective who maybe have done it before? Or anyone else that um, was a good support network for you? Um, well, my pop had a big influence in that. He he had he's done a lot of travelling in his time, and um, yeah, he kind of helped me a lot in that, and just giving me little tips and what's go, what to expect and things like that. I I didn't know many people in Canberra, which was a bit of a downer since I since I was a, it was quite isolating in that situation, having to be with just your family and like making new friends not only at school but in football as well. Um, it was a, yeah, I didn't really have any player influences oh I um Sally Shippard who used to be uh, who's from Wagga Way and everything like that she yep. played in Canberra and I had I knew her from when I was living in Wagga um I think I met her and her dad when I was traveling up and watching Canberra United play when I was younger um and she gave me a few little tips as well since she moved up and moved her life as well so there was little um yep. gestures like that but also you kind of can't prepare for anything until you really experience it. So, <laughs> yeah. What helped you get through it? Um, my family. Yeah, it was, they, they've been with me every step of the way. I don't know, like moving your life at such a young age, you're not sure what to expect and you're still developing yourself as a person. So having their support and just kind of helped me to stay driven and motivated and, um, yeah, just continue to love the sport. You mentioned the challenging times your parents must have went through getting you up to Sydney and yeah, um, Pop as well. What were the big, biggest challenges for you as a footballer in your move to Sydney and now to Western Sydney? Um, the, well, the, the biggest challenge is like the recovery of my body. Um, I think I could put my body through a lot at that point as the fact that I was younger, um, but after a while then moving to Sydney there was more requirements on my uh, with the gym and things like that and as I'm going through this injury now I'm kind of like I put my body through a lot so then in the end it started to wear and tear and kind of break down a little bit which was unfortunate but um, yeah I think that was probably one of the biggest differences and challenges going on the road all the time. So speaking of challenges, and you finally got to make your debut for Western Sydney Wanderers, which is a massive achievement. Um, how was that experience, and was it even better against the bitter rivals and being able to do that in a derby? <laughs> yeah, it was it was amazing to play at the old stadium uh, where the Wanderers first like um, came about. Playing at Parramatta Stadium, it was just amazing. The crowd was fantastic. I was so nervous. I, <laughs> I. Yeah, I couldn't sleep the night before. I remember like going to sleep and I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make so many mistakes tomorrow. I don't know what to do. If I do make a mistake, do I just cry? Do I just hide myself? I just, it was like all over the place. Anxiety was through the roof at that point. But uh, it was everything and more, to be honest, walking out onto that field and just seeing, every, like, just seeing the crowd and the football field and playing against Sydney FC. It was Oh, amazing. And I think 60 seconds in, I actually copped a yellow card too. So I um, got that out of the way pretty early. <laughs> Quality. Um, obviously, with Western Sydney Wanderers and then in the female game, backing that up, it's a massive season, then going straight into NPL with New South Wales as well and Sydney Olympic. How do, how do you juggle that? Yeah, it's a, we probably get like two weeks off in between seasons. Um, maybe um it, it's it's all about probably recovering your body well like you really need to take the time when you've got the time to really relax your body it's not the fact that you have to stop doing everything it's just putting your body through probably high intense training sessions that you would do normally to get fit for a season and things like that so instead of doing another pre-season you really need to relax uh, relax and just 
step away for a little bit. Maybe you're still in the gym and things like that and keeping your touches up. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it does take a toll on your body after a while. Probably I started to feel it probably doing it after three W League seasons. Then I started to feel it a little bit more um, in between. But uh, yeah, it, it's just about taking time when you've got it. Yeah, and and then without including that, then you've got your sort of national camps and future Matilda stuff on top of that. So it's extremely busy. Um, <laughs> obviously, you, you went into Western Sydney Wanderers and became a bit of an ambassador, um, billboards and things. Your face on it. Did that change anything for you, or how how did you take all of that? Yeah, look, that was unexpected to be driving down there. M7 and then there's a huge photo of my head on a billboard. <laughs> Never <laughs> thought I'd see something like that. Uh, I did get a few Snapchats from friends where they were drawing on my face, but that was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but no, it was, it's, it's been a great opportunity and honour to have those kind of um, things. Um, yeah, the club has just been amazing. I, they helped me launch my professional career at such a young age. They had faith in me. Even when I didn't do so well, they were still behind me in every aspect. And um, I've stuck with them for five years and they've stuck with me. So it's been a great relationship. And um, yeah, like the, and the best thing about playing with Wanderers is that I get to go out into the community so much um, since they're such a community-based club. And that's where I found my passion outside of football is just connecting with people. It's such an um, awesome thing. And that's what I love doing is sharing the game and sharing everything that you go through in life. Um, and to do that through being an athlete because you have such a massive platform. And I think to take that opportunity, you, you, you really can't. Yep. I believe your family's recently moved back to Wagga. What's that like now, especially with the injury and having to cope by yourself? Yeah, it, it was a little bit harder. Um, it was difficult at first. I I felt a little bit more isolated in the fact that I was stressing about things that I hadn't had to stress about when I was living at home. So, And it's not like they just moved around the corner or I just moved up around the block or something like that. They moved five hours back <laughs> back into inner state. So, um, yeah, look, it, it was hard at first, but I got used to it pretty, um, got used to it pretty quickly, um, staying away in camps and things kind of gives you a little bit of a little bit of a taste of what it's like not living at home. So yeah, it wasn't too big of a change, but um, I visit frequently now and get, get to go back home and just chill out. So. Cool. So aside from Liam and Kyle, who do you think have been the, the best players you've played with and <laughs> who's, who's had the most influence on your career from a, player perspective um probably one of the best players is Alex Chidiak she is my best friend but even outside of that um her as a player she's so driven and the fact that she still just plays it for the love of the game and it's not a it's not a career like it's not a a business thing to her she just loves playing it loves traveling um and that's everything that I share with her so yeah she's been one of the best players that I've played with to be honest player, person, everything like that. Um, we started playing together in the under-17s Matildas and she was 15 and I was 14 at this time. And ever since that moment, we haven't been away from each other football-wise. You've had um, multiple goalkeeper coaches over the years. How has that affected your goalkeeping? And do you like it or do you prefer one? Yeah, it's uh, it's a... it's different when you change um, goalkeeping coaches because every goalkeeping coach um, has a little bit more of a different view on how certain things happen and things like that so or what techniques you use so because goalkeeping is more of a detailed um, position as in like what hand should be where what foot should be where what like should you be in a lower set position should one-on-one -on -one situations like a lot of goalkeeping coaches are all different in that um, in that way so so changing in between goalkeepers, goalkeeping coaches, you, you kind of find what works for you more than anything. So it is good to have um, those different views because you can learn to have different um, tools in your toolbox kind of thing. Um, so I think it is a positive to have something like that, to be honest. So if you're going between uh, Wanderers and then Young Matildas, for instance, you need to write down what the 
what the goalkeeper coach preferences were, or is it something stored in the memory bank, or are they just all extra tools that you have? Yeah, look, it's, um, yeah, I think it's just, it comes out whenever, to be honest, like you get into a position and you don't have time in a game to think, but you've already worked on it so much that it just happens naturally. Um, and if you do it in a session and you're with the, and you do one technique and that's not what technique they like, you just wait until they smash you and then you kind of change it and you're like, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose speaking about goalkeeper coaches, um, how has that affected your game? You look back when goalkeeper coaches weren't exactly involved as much or you sort of rolled up to a session and the head coach years back was sort of running it and now to have an actual specialised goalkeeper coach, how has that influenced and, and helped you develop as a player? Yeah, massively. Um, I, I, I don't know what it is, but there's always that different connection that you have when you talk to your goalkeeping coach. You're wa- way more one-on-one. Um, you talk in detail about a lot of things that you do. So it's, it's. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, it's the. There's a bigger connection when you're working with a goalkeeping coach. Um, it definitely. It's not just working. Um, physically and the technique and things like that. It's it's working mentally as well. Um, Ninety minutes. You're standing in a goal and kind of you can't stop you like staying staying in a game when you're a player it's easier you're moving around you're getting touches on the ball more frequently but then as a goalkeeper you're standing still so you need to be thinking about kind of what you're talk- like where your defenders are where you are in the goal what moments you should drop what moments you should attack and those are the little details that you want to be working on with your goalkeeping coach um those are make massive differences. They're little details, but yeah, make massive differences. Yeah. You speak about how you, you love getting back into the community. I know the Riverina is very grateful for when you do come back to Wagga and be involved in the school gala days, et cetera. Um, and I know a few photos last time you were down here with the kids all lining up in the city. Just how do you feel being able to give back to where you grew up and seeing all those kids, you know, look up to you and you've, you've become a role model for them? Yeah, look, last year when I came back for the gala day, I think he brought every single kid in Wagga um, to that. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was there for like three hours taking photos. <laughs> but no, it was amazing to see so many kids were involved in, um, in the development that you've probably brought into the community and the fact of bringing kids in like that. It's, it's probably what Wagga lacked in a way. And I think yeah, gala days like that need to be done more in rural and remote areas because it just promotes the sport so much. And getting to do those things um, as an athlete, like I wish there was a lot more footballers that came back to Wagga when I was there because I think it really helps kids motivate themselves. Um, the connections I got to make with a lot of those kids at that gala day was fantastic. I still remember one where the girl was getting so annoyed because she couldn't save the ball and she, the next um, 10 saves, she saved them all and she was like over the moon about it. So little moments like that, they stick with you. And that's what I love about getting back out into the community. Yeah. Well, your career is relatively young, especially as a goalkeeper. But what's been the best moment so far though? Oh, um, though I didn't get to play, um, I went away when I went away with the Matildas. Um, I think it was the end of 2018. Um, when I went to go, I went overseas with them to England and France, and getting to warm up on um, Craven Cottage Field was amazing. The grass was like a cloud. <laughs> I like like I can't describe it. It was so nice to dive on something that didn't like scratch your legs or anything. It was just beautiful. It was a footballer's dream, um, a goalkeeper's dream, to be honest, actually. But <laughs> it was amazing. Like those are the moments that you kind of work towards and like not that I have made it all the way where I get to play on a field like that but you take those little moments where you even get to warm up on something like that. Um, There's probably lots of young female players that are wanting to follow the pathway that you've shown. Uh, What would be some of your advice for some of those players in what what they should concentrate on, what their mindset should be, and, you know, what what should they try and uh, implement in their own training? Um, 
it, it's just about staying focused and driven. Um, at a young age, you're going to go through a lot of different changes uh, uh, mentally, physically, with your body in the fact of how your muscles um, come about and things like that. But it's the one percenters that you get to do in the gym, um, staying behind, doing extras. You'll have a lot of distractions um, and it's about balancing them, um, balancing, finding a balance in your life and um, the, yeah, I think just focus is a massive one, um, being determined and really not letting anyone get inside your head that you're not good enough or that you, you can't do something. It, it's not right. Um, I think every young person should have a dream in their head and if they want it, they can go get it. <laughs> what do you think a Women's World Cup would do for Australia if we got it here? Oh, It'd be amazing to have something like that. Um, the Matildas have worked so hard over the last probably 10 years where they've become more of a successful team um, in Australia. And I think to have it would be a massive reward to them and not just the, pl the current players, but the past players as well. Um, and, yeah, I think it was just to get the grassroots up and going again, like having just the few games that we get to have here in Australia, it already brings so much more participation. Imagine having a World Cup. <laughs> that yeah. could be unreal. What's uh, the next targets for you yourself? What, what goals have you set yourself over the next couple of, couple of years? Um, well, since the coronavirus has come around and the Olympics has been pushed back, <laughs> um, I'm hoping I can push to be maybe a contender in that. But uh, yeah, look, it's mostly I, it's hard to set goals when you're a little bit injured. It's mostly your your goals are your um, to get back and get to get playing, and then hopefully once I'm there, I'm um, going to be striving for bigger things, I guess. <laughs> We have a little conversation with everyone who comes on the show. Um, firstly, who are some footballers you liked growing up watching? Um, probably my favourite would be, well, she's a female footballer and she plays for Australia. So Lydia Williams, she was one of my favourite watching. But um, the one that always cracked me up was Zlatan Imovic. He was <laughs> he's just a cracker because he's so cocky and just gets away with everything. <laughs> Love it. And then secondly, that's are you a Messi fan or a Ronaldo fan? Oh, that's a tough one because I really like them both. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably Messi, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's another one. Um, just before we do close, obviously um, you with Western Sydney Wanderers and Sydney Olympic, something we haven't touched base on is can you describe the moment you got to put the Australian jersey on for the first time? Uh, it was, yeah, it was next level. Um, I actually, I might have cried. Um, <laughs> it was, it was before, yeah, I was with my best friend, Alex Chidiak, and we've always had this thing when we sing the national anthem, we just squeeze each other um, on the heads, like when we've obviously got our arms around each other. It's just, like it's just an amazing feeling to be standing there playing for your country, representing for your country, and you're standing there doing it with the your your mates that you who would have all gone through um, struggles to get to that point. Um, yeah, it was next level. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, again from the regional football hub, thank you. And when we do get back into football, uh, all the best with your season with Sydney Olympic and the Future Matildas program. Um, Take care in these times. And again, thank you for joining us. No, thank you for having me. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys.